I could almost see a storm brewing up when I saw my mom walk in the house with yet another outrageously expensive necklace. My dad would go all haywire if he found out that she went out on yet another spree to drain all of his precious money, I thought. She has become a serious shopping addict and thinks that she can hide it easily because of my disability to hear. Well, much to her dismay, I absolutely can. When I was about seven, I developed a rare ear disease, due to which I couldn't hear anything by the time I reached the age of ten. We tried numerous treatments. Consequently, I underwent through several surgeries, but nothing really seemed to work for me. I was distressed. I knew life wouldn't be easy anymore, and I was petrified of the huge expedition in front of me, which was learning sign language and reading lips. I felt like my life has been turned upside down when I found out I couldn't go to the school every normal kid does. Yes, you guessed it right. I had to get enrolled into the school for children with sight and hearing disabilities. I'd be lying if I said it didn't take a toll on me. One day, I was so tired of limitation imposed by my disability that I started crying heavily. I fell to my knees with my head held between my hands, drowning in the river of my tears. My broken dreams and newfound anxieties would haunt me in my sleep. I was not ready to admit that I couldn't listen and jam to my favorite Fleetwood Mac songs. But I still had some luck left. God gave me good friends— it was just another regular stressful day until I saw my friend Macy rushing towards me with a bright grin on her face. She engulfed me in a hug. I was slightly taken by her strange behavior. What's up with you today? I asked. She nudged my elbow and pulled me to a side, whispering into my ear, I have something for you. She had sparked my curiosity. What's this device in your hand? I asked. This? She laughed. It will change your life. Congrats! You can finally hear, my love. I would never believe her if I didn't try it for myself. Yes, I could hear everything. I could finally listen to Joni Mitchell as much as I wanted. I felt my feet lift off the ground. I was enthralled. I decided to be coy about it and didn't tell my parents a word about it. I couldn't believe that my parents didn't buy me a hearing aid despite seeing me struggle intensely. I felt betrayed, that too, by my own parents. It felt unreal. They couldn't understand my misery. I talked about a storm earlier. So one night, my parents got dressed up for a party. My mom put on her twinkling necklace and clingy black dress. Both of them looked dapper. It seemed like they were going to a fancy party at an elite's palace. I was bewildered. When did they become so rich? I asked myself. At this point, I couldn't care less. I grabbed some snack and went to watch TV. Netflix and chill, you call it. All of a sudden, I heard someone banging on the door heavily. I slightly panicked but decided to hear the door anyway. I ran to see in the CCTV my parents had recently installed. I saw a middle-aged woman in distress. Yes? I asked. Open the door, please! They're after me! It's Tracy! I'm in trouble! She looked like she genuinely needed help, so I opened the door and let her in. Her eyes were sunken in. She had huge bags underneath. It appeared as if she hasn't slept for days, her lips chapped and dehydrated. She kept asking me questions about some necklaces and my parents' whereabouts. I somehow told her I couldn't hear and left the room to bring her some food and water. She ate and continued thanking me profusely. A few minutes later, she retired to my bed as suggested by me, and within few seconds she dozed off to sleep. The sound of my parents quarreling snapped me out of my daze. I rushed towards them. Why aren't you asleep, Emily? my mom asked me. I sighed and asked them to follow me to my room. That is when I saw the color draining from their faces. They shrieked. Why did you come here, Trace? My mom's voice echoed through my room. We are in turmoil, I thought to myself. My dad made up some lie about Tracy's relationship with my parents and instructed me to go sleep in their room. I know eavesdropping is a bad thing, but I was not bothered. I still tried listening to my parents talk. 
I realized my friend Macy wasn't lying when she said, This device is extremely high-powered, because I could hear some men talking. We can't keep waiting for her here forever. They may call cops on us. We should leave. The huge black Mercedes drove off swiftly. Soon after, I heard my parents sneaking out of the house. I ran up to the huge window and couldn't believe what I had seen. My parents were sure hiding the truth from me. They met a guy in front of Tracy's car. He handed them red boxes. We'll put them in the lock room. I was dumbfounded. Did we have a lock room in our home, or are they talking about our study? I had to find out, so I tried to hide somewhere they couldn't see me. My dad went to his study, followed by my mom. My dad removed his hand-knotted vintage rug, and I wish I prepared myself for this moment, because beneath the rug was a door to a basement. It would be an understatement if I say I was stunned. The room was stacked with cash and red-colored velvet boxes. My eyes shone as my mom opened few boxes. The diamonds and jewels lit up the whole room. I gasped and rubbed my eyes in disbelief. I heard my mom say, Let's wrap up this matter tomorrow. We'll have to do something about Tracy. She can cause us some heavy trouble. I was confused. What are they hiding from me? How do I find out? I was exhausted. I was hyper aware of my surroundings, so upon feeling slightest disturbance near my dad's study, I was up on my feet and marched toward the room. As I opened the door, she gasped her mouth ajar. She panicked and tried to make excuses, and suddenly I felt a shift in her expression. Her lips upturned in a soft smile, and with that she came closer to me. You've been so kind to me, she said, while stroking my hair. In a matter of seconds, she pushed me into the basement and closed the door. She knew the passcode for this safe room? I shrieked. I couldn't believe how naive I was. Now it was me in that room, all alone, crying and knocking on the door hastily, but no one heard my cries. Few seconds later, Tracy is gone. She ran away, I heard my dad say through my hearing aid. My mom wailed while I could imagine my dad had his head in hands. He was furious at my mom. You said Tracy was your good friend? Would you like to rethink about it? My dad said, gritting his teeth. What are you going to tell our boss, Alex? He will not be good to us. You are one to blame, said my dad. Do you want more of those blindingly shiny neck pieces? My dad continued attacking my mom with snide remarks. I could only hope my parents would realize I was missing, but they didn't. So I sat on the floor of the room, soaking up the warmth from dim light of the room. I was surrounded by heaps of cash and boxes filled with jewelry. I didn't know my hearing device could catch the lowest and highest of the frequencies. I heard buzzing sounds. I figured out it was the boss Alex my parents were worried about, the same guy I saw in the black Mercedes. I thought my parents would finally come and look for me. The bell ringing snapped me out of my haze. I figured they were inside my house. They were demanding about Tracy and her stuff. Her stuff? I questioned myself. I could hear their footsteps approaching toward the study. Saying my prayers under my breath, I was ready for the relief. My parents opened the door of the room. There were two guys dressed in black standing in front of me. Their eyes lit us at the sight of cash and load of jewelry. Right when they were bussing looking inside, my parents shoved them inside and locked the room. I quickly hid behind the bags, hoping they won't notice my presence. But they did, and a shriek left their mouth that shrilled throughout the room. They were terrified. For a few seconds, I couldn't understand it. But eventually, got a hang of it and decided to play along to what they were thinking. Suddenly, one of them broke their silence. His lips were quivering, eyes were wide and body shivering. Soul of the goodness, we ask for your forgiveness. What can we do for you to forgive us? I had to stifle my giggles and continue with the act I had put on. I said, leave these people alone. It's not their fault. Go earn the money the righteous way. You need to leave, leave, leave in a sing-song voice. I was surprised at myself and was trying my best to suppress my laughter. Both of them nodded their heads hurriedly. 
I think God answered my prayers, and my parents opened the door of the room. Both of them hurried out and ran without even looking back. They were definitely running for their lives. My parents chased them without even noticing me. As soon as they left, I came out of the safe room and ran to my room. I locked myself into my room. I sat on my bed, recollecting myself. I was thinking about my whole day as I lied on the bed. Whoa, what a whirlwind was this day, I said to myself. I walked up to my desk, took out my journal. I started writing about the unusual events of the day. It is sure something to remember for the rest of my life. Why would my parents lie to me, and why were they doing this? I pondered over the situation. I finally understood that they were doing illegal business just to feed their hunger for money. I felt ashamed. How can they be so selfish? They were buying those second-copy jewelry and selling it to the men I encountered earlier, who sold them a head in black. I was in a state of shock. I thought we were poor, and my parents made money through blood and sweat. Since my dad had a small job in the corporate and my mom was a housewife who stayed at home and played dress-up every single day of her life, I heard the door closing, which signaled me that they were finally inside. I came out of my room, pretending to rub sleep off my eyes. That was the moment my mom turned toward me and gave me a sympathetic smile. I feigned unawareness about the situation and asked my parents if they could buy me a hearing aid, to which they blatantly refused. I couldn't believe my eyes. My heart said to confront them about the heaps of money they've been hiding underneath the ground, but my mind said to remain silent, and perhaps this was the reason why they want me to stay deaf. Nevertheless, I had learned my lessons.